I'm going to show you some hidden features that you can do with an Apple TV that will change the way that you use your Apple TV. Like changing the keyboard layout to make it easier to type, adding a border around icons for easier navigation, and even the ability to switch between streaming apps directly from the Apple Home app. So whether you're thinking about buying an Apple TV and want to learn more about what it can do, or maybe you already have an Apple TV and you want to learn about more features that it has, this video is for you. First up is disabling autoplay video previews. So when you open the Apple TV app, there's this banner at the top that scrolls through featured content and autoplays a trailer with sound. Not really great if you're watching shows late at night or if there's other people asleep in another room and it can definitely startle you if you're not expecting a sound to just start playing. Just go to settings, accessibility, motion, and turn off autoplay video previews. Now, when you open the TV app, it will still scroll through featured content, but it will not play the trailer or a sound. This does only apply to the native Apple TV app and does not apply to other streaming apps like Netflix, where you have to go to netflix.com from a web browser to disable autoplay. If you want to watch content that you don't normally have access to based on your location, then you can install a VPN on your Apple TV. There's many options available on the App Store. I haven't used any extensively to say which ones are good or bad, but any of them will make it appear like you're watching from somewhere else to view content you normally would not have access to based on where you live. Speaking of restricted content, the Apple TV has parental controls and restrictions to restrict content and purchases to specific people and age groups. The settings can be managed and bypassed with authorized users using a passcode or by unlocking with an Apple device that's on the same iCloud account. This is great, especially if you have kids and only want them to have access to age-appropriate content, like maybe clean music, TV shows, and movies. Third-party apps like YouTube or Netflix will have specific age restrictions, so if the age restriction is below what the app allows, then you'll have to authorize access to allow an app to work. Siri can play a huge role in controlling your Apple TV as well. If you have smart devices that work with Apple Home, like smart lights, smart locks, or smart plugs, then you can use Siri on the remote to control them. This gets even better because you can also run scenes using your voice or from Control Center and view the live feed of any HomeKit compatible cameras and even control the devices within that room as well as receive an alert from secure devices, like when a door is locked or a security system is armed or disarmed. To top it all off, the Apple TV can also be your HomeKit hub, which allows you to control any of your smart devices remotely and for automations to run. Like whenever an Apple TV turns on at night, then it can automatically run a movie time scene, and when the Apple TV turns off, then it can run another scene to turn house lights on. Now later in the video, I'll show you how to set this up. Another thing that Siri can do is that while you're watching a movie or a show on any streaming service, then you can use Siri on the Apple TV remote to control the playback. You can tell Siri to skip ahead or go back a certain amount of time, go to a specific time in the video, say like 35 minutes in, or even start the show or a movie from the very beginning. Not only are you able to control your Apple TV from either your lock screen or home screen with an iPhone that supports Dynamic Island, but you can also use your iPhone to physically find your remote if it's lost in the couch abyss. Or if somebody would rather use the physical remote instead of the digital remote on their iPhone. Open Control Center, tap the Now Playing section, tap the remote icon, then tap the name at the top, and a drop down shows you the remotes for all your Apple TVs and HomeKit compatible TVs. Choose the remote you want to find and tap this Find icon here. It'll bring up a cool animation that shows you how close or how far away you are from the remote with vibrations and flashing lights as you get closer. An even faster way to open the remote is by adding the Apple TV remote right into Control Center. These next hidden features are ones that I have recently discovered that have been a huge game changer for me and has completely changed the way that I use my Apple TV. With the remote on your iPhone, you can also enter text to search for something to watch or enter an account information for logging into apps. But maybe your iPhone is across the room and you don't want to get up to go get it. So you can use the on-screen keyboard using the Apple TV remote to search for something to watch. But in my opinion, this design is terrible 
and annoying to keep moving back and forth across the screen to choose letters or numbers. It's especially more annoying if you have a large TV. You can actually change the keyboard layout by going to settings, general, keyboard layout, and changing it from auto or linear to grid view, which brings the letters and numbers closer together and makes it much easier to type what you want to search for. Now, I already know what you're gonna be saying in the comments. Adam, just use Siri on the Apple TV remote to dictate what you wanna say. And I could, but sometimes Siri does not always understand correctly what I'm trying to say, and then I have to go back and type it myself for what I want to watch, so I'd rather just type things from the beginning and get it right the first time. Or maybe it's late at night and people in your home are asleep and you don't want to talk to Siri because you might wake them up. This way you can just type what you wanna watch instead. Speaking of text, I've recently become a huge fan of enabling captions for anything I want to watch to really understand what somebody is trying to say. Now, what you may not know is that these captions are fully customizable. From the font, the color, the size, and even the background color, you can really customize the captions to have them look just the way that you want them to look. Go to settings, accessibility, scroll down to subtitles and captioning and choose style. Here you can choose from a few preset subtitle options and to create your own, choose edit styles and then new style. You can give the style a name, choose the font, the style, the color and the size, as well as the background color and opacity and even choosing a text edge style like a drop shadow. I personally like trebuchet font with a black background and depressed edge style. You're able to delete a style if you don't need it anymore and choose which style you want to use in videos. These customized captions will display in most streaming apps like the Apple TV app, Netflix, and Disney Plus, but not for YouTube as the YouTube app has their own customizable captions built into the YouTube app. And if you enable the video override style, a show will ignore a certain style of the caption, like a certain font or background color. Next, let's look at some hidden features that make it very easy to use an Apple TV in dark environments, like late at night in a living room or in a bedroom. Light sensitivity dims the display and also adjusts the warmth of the picture quality the higher the sensitivity that you go. Reduce white point reduces the intensity of bright colors, which can help match the brightness of other lighting in a room. I have an Apple TV in my office that I use for having ambient content on in the background while I work. My office is a fairly dim room and I personally use reduce white point so I'm not blinded with the bright whites while I'm trying to work. Reduce motion is a cheat code to speed up your Apple TV as this will skip through all the fancy animations that you see when navigating the Apple TV, opening and closing apps, and even when switching between apps. All of these features and more can even be added to Control Center to quickly turn on and off and you can even set an accessibility shortcut in the settings to triple click the menu button on your remote and enable or disable an accessibility setting at any point, even while watching content. Now, I've been using the Apple TV for many years now, and there's one feature I just found out about that I cannot believe I did not know sooner. And it's quickly become my new favorite feature, and I bet you've never seen it before. You can add a white border around apps for easier navigation around your home screen. But what makes this feature so cool? Well, with this feature turned off, whenever you hover over an app, the app does get bigger, but at a quick glance, it doesn't really stand out, making it difficult to see which app you're actually about to select. Whereas having a white border around an app gives you a better visual indicator of what app is actually selected so you're not accidentally opening up the wrong app. What makes this truly amazing is that this gets synced to streaming apps as well, making it incredibly easy to know which episode or show you're selecting to make sure you're choosing what you actually want to see. To enable this, just go to Settings, Accessibility, display, focus style, and choose high contrast. Another feature I recently discovered that I've been using heavily is using the extra features exposed in the Apple Home app. This includes things like controlling the power, switching between different streaming apps right from the Home app, and even the ability to navigate the Apple TV without having to use any kind of remote. What's really cool about this is that all these extra features can be used in scenes and automations in the Apple Home app. So you can create a scene called Movie Night that wakes the Apple TV and opens a streaming app of your choice 
and controls lights to set the ambience. Or an automation that when you pause a movie, your lights turn on, and when you play it again, your lights turn off. And a huge shout out to Reed from Smart Home Solver for this genius idea. These features are not natively supported by Apple, so you will need a third party bridge like HomeBridge in order to do this. If you want a full tutorial video on how to do this and everything that you can do, then comment the word movie down in the comment section below and I'll make a video showing you how to do this. The Apple TV can also be used in shortcuts for controlling the playback, showing you the remote on your iPhone, opening apps, and more. I've made many videos on shortcuts that you can create with an Apple TV, and I'll leave one right here, and here's another video that I think you will like. And I would love to hear what feature you love about the Apple TV down in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye-bye.